Hey guys, it's a Daisy, and in this video, I want to share with you guys some tips as far as organizing and building your own closet. I know during the process of me doing mine, there were some people who were also trying to design their own closet and reorganize their space. So there are some things that I would have done a little bit differently, some steps that I would have taken instead of going the route that I did take. And I'm also going to share with you guys how much it cost as far as the foundation of like all the organizers and the shelving and getting the wood and everything. Not necessarily the decorating and the accessory part because that is completely optional and up to you. I really didn't get to go into everything in as much detail as I wanted to during the closet tour because that video was pretty lengthy. So I just figured I'd make a separate video to just kind of talk to you guys informally about some of the things that I did, some things that I would do differently, and you know some do's and don'ts and just some better ways of organizing so that you can have a much smoother process than I did and also just to make it faster for you guys. Um, I had no intention of building my own closet initially when I first started thinking about you know the fact that I wanted a built-in closet. I went online and I started designing a closet. They have many websites that you can go on and just kind of play with and when I looked at the price oh my god y'all it was like I want to say at least three thousand dollars minimum just to get shelving on two sides of my closet not even necessarily anything else just the shelving itself so I was not about to spend three thousand or more or even a little bit under three thousand to make this happen so I started looking at different units and like I mentioned in the um, very first video I could not use the IKEA pack system or anything like that because of the way my ceilings are made they're slanted so I was like hey I'll just build it myself and that's what I ended up doing that's how I actually started doing this process I went into the Home Depot and a salesperson Brian really helped me um, as far as the type of materials and everything that I would need. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> That's Brian, guys. <laughs> I'm the guy that cuts all our, all our uh, pieces. <laughs> yeah, that's how everything started. So the first tip I would share with you guys to help you have a much smoother process, I would say purge first. Go ahead on and go through your closet. Get rid of all those clothes that you no longer wear those clothes that you think you might one day wear again <laughs> um old things that you know are just not gonna come back in style you know I made the mistake of not purging first I went straight for the building and I moved all of my clothes all of my shoes all of my jewelry purses everything into my bedroom so for the past two months um, while I was doing this process I was living in chaos in my room I had clothes and shoes and everything everywhere so as I was building I was purging at the same time just to start feeling some type of organization in my closet because I was starting to get anxiety <laughs> so that's what that's the biggest thing if I had to do it all over again I would go ahead on and get rid of everything that I don't want first and then I'll start building everything um, I took a lot of things that I didn't want. I took them to the Goodwill and donated them there and dropped them off. Put them in some trash bags and just hauled them off over there. So the second thing that I would recommend is that you draw a blueprint. You don't have to be an artist to draw squares and rectangles because all shelving is is squares and rectangles. So take an inventory of everything that you have in your closet. All the products and everything that you're looking to organize. I was looking to organize my clothes, my purses, my clutches, my jewelry. I had a lot of perfume I wanted to organize and my shoes and jeans. I had a bunch of different things. So I started drawing out a blueprint of how I wanted to place everything into my closet. I took a sheet of paper, drew the shape of my closet, and I just started drawing out shelving and just kind of visioning what I wanted and where I wanted to place everything and took it from there so the third thing I would recommend is that once you get your pieces you have all your measurements and you get your pieces cut at either Lowe's or Home Depot I would recommend that you paint them first 
paint your pieces before you start putting them together um, when I put the first two organizers together I did not paint them so after I had them together I was it was kind of complicated getting in the cracks and turning upside down and trying to paint under the shelves and then the little nicks and crannies of it so after I did those first two moving forward I painted everything before I started putting it together therefore once I put it together I didn't have to take the paintbrush and do all of that I just used my roller brush in the beginning and had them already ready to go so now that you've purged and you've got a blueprint and you've got your pieces and you've started building once you start putting your clothes and your accessories and your shoes and everything in your closet I will say color coordinate um I thought initially that I wasn't gonna color coordinate I'm like I don't need to do all that but I tried to color coordinate to the best of my ability as I could based on the clothes and the shoes that I had and it made it look so much more neat so much more organized um, it really does make a difference with the look of your space because if you're gonna take the time to do it you might as well go ahead on and take the time to really do it right so I put all of my pinks and my loud colors and the reds and the blues and the green together. And then I've got my neutrals and all of my blacks and everything together. And this helps you to easily see exactly what, you know, shoes or clothes and accessories you can put together because you're only in a certain space for that certain color. So I do recommend that you do that. The next thing that I recommend is that you do try to use the same type of hangers. Now as for me, I did start off using some of the velvet hangers. I got them 25 in a pack for like $9.99 at Ross and you can also get them at Marshalls as well and I got the black velvet ones but because I had so many clothes and pieces it was starting to get a bit pricey so what I decided to do and as you may see in my closet tour all of my hangers were not the same I didn't want to spend that much money on hangers all at one time so I decided that that's something that I'm gonna gradually do so I have been collecting hangers just over the weeks as I go along and eventually they will all be the same but I wasn't gonna bulk out a hundred two hundred dollars on hangers all at that time it just wasn't that important to me in the moment but like I said it is something that I'm gonna gradually do and it's something that you can gradually do over time you don't have to do everything all at one time and I will say you know whatever hanger you decide to start with whether it's the velvet hangers whether you like wood hangers whether they're the plastic hangers that you can get from the dollar store whatever it is just make sure you kind of want to stick with that pattern so that as you start buying them you are consistently buying the same type of hanger and not switching it up and then you still end up with a bunch of different hangers so my next tip is that anything that you're going to have exposed and showing just make sure that you have them folded and organized neatly because if it's going to be exposed and it's all messy and just thrown on the shelves, it kind of defeats the purpose of, you know, having an organized closet. So like for my jeans and all of my pants, they're exposed, but I make sure that I have my lights with my lights, my dark jeans together, and then my colored jeans are together and they're all folded in the same direction. That really creates a big difference as far as the look of your space. So the last tip I would say is have fun like just make your closet represent you if you want to have a fantasy land or you want to think you're in Hollywood or you want to be in Paris or wherever however you want your theme of your closet to be have fun with it and that's when you're done putting all your accessories and your clothes and everything and you start decorating and you start going out and you start buying like different accent pieces and flowers and sayings and pictures everything that you want to you know make your closet be you basically so overall as far as how much money i ended up spending on this closet um i ended up using five mdf boards and those were the big sheets of boards that i got cut into pieces and um they were between 26 to 30 dollars a piece i used the half inch and i also used the three fourth inch so uh, let's just round it up to $30. I spent about $150 on the boards and the pieces to make um, the small organizer, the large organizer, the accessory holders, my island, as well as this um, shoe shelf unit that I put behind here as well. Now I have five of the three shelf mainstay pieces that I got from Walmart. They were about $15 a piece because they were on rollback. So I spent about $75 on those. And then I also ordered two pieces from Amazon 
prior to realizing that I was going to be doing everything on my own because two of these pieces I could have just built myself. So I ended up spending $60 on the two drawer unit and on the two shelf that I'm keeping my jeans on. So overall that's about I guess $300 maybe um, that I spent doing everything building just the foundation which wasn't bad. $300 in comparison to three, four thousand or more is absolutely nothing and then it took me a span of two months so I ended up doing everything gradually so I wasn't feeling a big chunk of 300 at one time because like it was pretty much like a every weekend type of thing I was working in here that was the only time I had to get in here so that was also including the molding and the paint that I used to paint everything so it was about 300 and something dollars which I just I feel like that was pretty good and um, that's not including my accessories like I said that's optional for whatever you want to do with it and however much you want to spend on pictures and all the other stuff to make it look like you know the theme that you want it to look like but yeah guys that's pretty much everything um the last thing I will say though is just make sure that once you start it, you got the time it takes to make it happen because it was time consuming. I'm not even going to lie and sit up here and say, oh, this was so super duper easy and quick. No, it actually took time. It was time consuming because um, if you work full time, if you have kids, the only time you're really going to be able to invest in this is maybe in the evenings, but really on the weekends. And the weekends was the only time I really had to spend in here to do this. So that's what also took so long. And also, as you start building everything, you're going to keep wanting to add this and add that, you know, to your space, which is fine because in the end, you want to be happy with it. So guys, I hope you all have enjoyed this video. I hope that some of my tips have helped you in some type of way with your space and as far as organizing and building your own closet. So I will see you all in the next video. If you have any type of other questions or comments or some things that I may not have answered, please leave them down below and I will definitely respond. But in the meantime, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.